Welcome back to Brashonomics. You know, I was mentioning at the top of the hour how the entire country seems to see real estate prices going up, not just here in Seattle. However, one thing we do have in Seattle is a lot more people moving here. I think it's funny that I remember... You know, even just 10 years ago, everybody who was from Seattle, lived in Seattle, was from Seattle. And now you start to meet people who are from other parts of the country. Uh, Corey Brandt joins us, a managing broker with REMAX Real Estate, and consistently ranks among the top 1% of brokers in the country. Corey, how are you, man? Good. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, you must you see a ton of people coming into Seattle, and, and that's probably one of the reasons house prices are going up. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, as the market slowed down, that uh, trickle of new people coming in was where most of the buyers and selling transactions were occurring. Uh, You know, now it's the influx of people moving up and that type of thing, but we're still getting a lot of folks coming into the area as businesses kind of loosen their wallets. Mm -hmm. And and people are coming into the area have, I mean, high paying jobs. They're maybe coming from other expensive areas where this may even seem like a bargain. But how do you help people find the right house. I mean, because it's not like Seattle's a vacation spot, right? It's not like people come to Seattle every year with their family in order to you know, check out the gorgeous weather in, in the middle of winter. Yeah, yeah. Well, and if they come to Seattle, they're coming in August, right? right. So they, they have this perception that everything's golden. Um, you know, and a lot of people don't know where they want to be. They come to Seattle and they go, whoa, there's like these bridges that float and we got to try and get across <laughs> that and there's a toll on it and this is this is like crazy, right. you know? And so you'll you'll get them and they'll say, well, hey, you know, I really like West Seattle and this is going to be perfect for my job in Redmond. And you have to say, yeah, not really. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> so, uh, there's two bridges. You go drive through a city or depending in either or you're driving through a city. Right, right. And they just have no concept of distance and time with traffic. And so you just kind of you have to guide them into what makes sense. And you kind of learn a little bit about their family and what their priorities are and that kind of thing and whether schools are important. You know, so you you end up being kind of a almost like in a business, you'd be a mentor, but you're more of just kind of a guide to to help them make the right decisions, give them the information they need or show them where they can get that information. It must be fun. I mean, you get to show people the city, you, you know, you live in. What's the biggest wow factor that people get out of driving through Seattle for the first time. Oh, it's got to be the Fremont Troll. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, seriously, what is that? <laughs> no, I don't know. It's uh, or the spikes yeah. of doom or whatnot, you know, yeah. right down the way. <laughs> yeah, no, the, the classic wow factor was uh, I took a client out and she's she was from Chicago and she's like, you know, we we, we still need to go look at these houses because you know I'm here only you know for a limited time and yeah, there was a foot of snow. And I'm like, that's fine. You know, I'm a skier, right? So I had the land cruiser out, and we just cruised around. And she got on a phone with one of her friends that was in Chicago, and she goes, this is crazy. There's so many hills here. You know, she had no idea. She sure. thought we were just going to be driving across these flat plains to get to see all these houses. So It does yeah. not work that way. It, it is. Uh, so it really comes down almost just the hills. I mean, especially if people are coming from the Midwest where you can just see forever. Yeah, and it's and and you've got that, and you've got pricing. I mean, perfect example. If they're coming from the Midwest, they're looking at us like we're crazy on what we're selling these things for. If they're coming up from you know Los Gatos or San Francisco area, they're going, "Wow, this is a steal!" What a so, deal! I mean, it's totally dependent on where folks are coming from. Sure. So you talked about location as opposed to traffic, uh, you know, which is a, a big key player, especially around here. Right. With our amazing public transportation yeah. that they have, will someday actually put uh, on the map that, that gets people to go where they, you know, where they're coming from and where they're going. Um, schools is also a big factor. You know, a lot of people, I guess, east side versus Seattle. Is that something you go into detail with? Oh, yeah, that's a huge factor. And, and the school boundaries are really random. I mean, Seattle School District is nicely defined. But you get into Sammamish, right? And you're served by the Issaquah and the Lake Washington School District. And it's like this random line in the middle of the city. You go into Renton and you've got Issaquah School District. You've got Bellevue School District and you've got Renton School District. People are thoroughly confused. They can look at a house on one side of the street and its value is dramatically different than the house on the other side of the street. And frankly, if they hire a moron, he's not going to guide them to what they really need (laughs) to know. Don't hire morons. (laughs) Yeah. So, um, you know, it's it's really giving them the information, giving them the knowledge, double checking and verifying that everything on that listing is accurate so that they don't end up buying a house and, 
and finding that it's really not what they thought they were signing up for. Sure. Well, you know, one thing people do know they're signing up for when they move to Seattle is is Grace Guys, you know, eight months out of the year. How do you help people understand maybe the weather and what they're really getting into? Because when you live here for a long time, it's just normal. Right. You know, and by the end of February, March, you're like, okay, we're ready. And by the end of summer, you're like, yeah, I'm really kind of glad summer's over because we tend to like that change of seasons. Uh, how do you explain that persona of this city? Uh, I've lived other places kind of all over the world, and so I, and I've traveled all over the world. And, and, you know, there's definitely – it can definitely wear on you. I mean, if these grace guys, at least, you know, you get to a certain age and you're, you're not maybe as busy or, or whatever in those short days and grace guys get to you. You know, having lived on Lake Washington on the shadow side – uh, you know, and being more of a night person, I realized that, you know, one of the key questions I ask people are, are you a morning person? Do you want to see the morning sun or do you want to see the evening sun? Because if you put somebody into a house where they're backed up against a hillside, you better know the answer to that question because they're going to be mad as, you know, all get out at you if uh, they don't see the sun after 3.30 on the days when it is sunny. Right. right? So, so I mean, that it's just the way your house is faced, really. I mean, the western exposure, eastern exposure. Right, right. And you've got neighborhoods like Miramont where you're completely surrounded by trees and people say, this is so beautiful. And I'm like, yeah, it's dark. Are you good with dark? If you're good with dark, it's great. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 there's places like in Kirkland, Bridal Trails area, same oh, yeah. thing. You drive, you're like, man, this is gorgeous. There's not a tree less than maybe 80 feet anywhere, and I don't think they let you cut them down. Yeah. No, I just sold one in there a couple of days ago, six offers. So. Yeah, well, I guess the sunshine uh, doesn't yeah. matter to some people. <laughs> That's why they moved to Seattle, potentially. Uh, Corey Brandt joins us. Uh, Corey, so what are some of the other big pieces of the puzzle for people moving into the city? Well, you know, I think, uh, you know, community boundaries, the style of the home, you know, what's what's saleable here versus what might be saleable in Southern California or on the East Coast. You know, on the East Coast, a colonial style house, hey, that's going to sell no problem. You throw a colonial style house into a neighborhood around here and it's going to sit. Mm-hmm. I mean, it truly is going to sit. So you got to look at it and say, hey, can I modify this and make it more popular or you know, so little nuances that those kind of things are important for people to look at. And and, and, uh, and explain a colonial house. What does that I mean? What does that entail that is so not liked here? Uh, you know, you've got your double hung windows, right? So you've got these smaller windows that don't allow a lot of light in. It's kind of a box. It kind of and, looks and like and a then barn it's got, almost, it's doesn't it? It's got columns out in the front. And, yeah. Uh, that'd be a Dutch colonial, which are... Oh. Absolutely gorgeous. I mean, you find a Dutch colonial and it's cheap, snap that thing up. Okay. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, there's definitely. You can you know, find you, anything in this city for cheap, snatch yeah. <laughs> it up right now. Yeah, that's true. And the other big thing is condo litigation laws. Washington State's condo litigation laws are different than most of the rest of the country. And they need to know what their exposure is if they're buying a condo that was built uh, in the last four years. So hugely important, can't be understated. Yeah, the condos does seem to be a big piece because you go in and whether it's litigation, whether it's about to get wrapped, there's all these different pieces to it where you might not be getting what you think you bought. Right, right. Yeah, you don't want to buy into a problem. So you got to try and avoid that as best you can. <laughs> no kidding. Corey, uh, so tell us, tell me a little bit. You know, we talked about that wow factor when people come here. What are some other big hurdles that, you know, people maybe need to get over other than hills in the snow? I mean, is there anything that, that people just, I don't know, drive down the street and really notice? Uh, well, we get the sun breaks, right? Because our news talks about the sun breaks, which is not a normal thing. I mean, I've had, I couldn't tell you how many people have said, what in the heck is a sun break? <laughs> it's a partly so. <laughs> cloudy. Part- I'm still curious is what's the difference between partly cloudy and partly sunny? Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's yeah, a good is there, one. Is it, is yeah. it 60, 40 one way or the other? Right. Yeah, I think that's dependent on whether they're talking in the spring or they're talking in the fall. It's kind of your mood. Yeah, yeah so, exactly. Or, or yeah. whatever the weather guy or gal, uh, whatever they had for you know breakfast, if they're feeling good, yeah, you yeah, know, then it's, it's partly, partly sunny, sunny <laughs> man. If, if they had a tough night the night before, it's partly yeah. cloudy. It's going to yeah. be dreary with some mist. Yeah. Uh, Corey, is there any other good websites or anything that you can think about that people for who are coming here should think that should know about? Oh yeah. You know, I got a terrible one. CoreyBrant.com. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, there's, uh, you know, there's plenty of good sites. If you just Google, uh, you know, Seattle real estate and that kind of thing. Um, there's a lot of information on that. 
I'm adding an app to my site that's going to give drive times to locations. We should have that up within the next uh, couple weeks here, uh, and that's pretty pretty awesome because it'll it'll actually give you the drive times with traffic without, so you can manage when you would leave for work and that kind of thing. It's it's a whole <laughs> whole new system that we're beta testing. For, that's um, awesome. With yeah. game day, you know, does it does it go Mariners schedule, Seahawks schedule, Husky schedule? Yeah. No, no. no. Uh, well, yeah, actually it does. Now that you mentioned it, it does do that. Because um, if you're not going the Husky game, football game, and you cross 520 going to Seattle oh, on a yeah. Saturday, it's a horrible oh, idea. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, it's, uh, it's the same technology that's used to uh, run the Garmin uh, navigation systems, and they're, they're going to beta test it uh, with a couple of key agents. And I'm nice. lucky enough to, uh, to have been on a lacrosse team with one of the executives. So, there you um, go. Or my kids were, I should say. I was. But. <laughs> <laughs> So. You look like a lacrosse player, Corey. Yeah, yeah. Corey, thanks so much for joining us again. That is Corey Brandt, managing broker with Remax. Uh, when we come back, we are going to continue the conversation on real estate here in Seattle because, well, it's just kind of a tumultuous time. We got to talk about it. We'll be right back after this break. 